Welcome to Campfire Chronicles, episode number 11. It is Monday, June 6, 2016, and it is 7.06 p.m. I'm Robbie. I'm Andrew. And I'm Brian. Okay, <laughs> what are we talking about today? I think we're going to talk about Yellowstone. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell them where we went, what we just did, etc. Yeah, we went to Yellowstone, backpacked in the Solfatara Plateau, which, if you've ever seen a map of Yellowstone, the roads are in a figure eight, and that's like right smack dab in the middle of it. And uh, before that, we camped at a little tent cabin thing and then stayed at a motel afterwards, but it was awesome. It was a great time. I think this might have been one of our best trips ever, actually. I think it was one of my favorites ever, for sure. Yeah, the trail we took was definitely amazing in terms of like the views that we had and just the variety of landscapes that we saw. Which is funny because we were talking about how like some people, I don't know, Thomas had asked people about the trail and they're like, yeah, it's kind of a boring trail. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Like that trail, it seemed to me it had a ton of variety and yeah. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, you went through forests and then like you saw some mountains. Yeah. And it was an easy trail. <laughs> yeah, that was a great thing. So is it a spoiler to tell what happened as far as precip- precipitation? <laughs> uh, well, people know that it rained. The first day. Yes, it definitely yeah. rained. Yeah, it hailed too. Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah. I didn't know that it could do that. Mm-hmm. But anyways, we went to Yellowstone in 2009, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. And that was, I think we've talked about this before, but that trip was planned by Thomas, <laughs> and he was 15 years old at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we were having trouble getting like everything all situated and then I remember finally just asking Andrew, I was like, who's planning this? He's like, Thomas. I go, how old is Thomas? He's 15. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. He had actually, he had been there before. So maybe he had a slight advantage in that sense. No, he does a great job planning. Like yeah. he's anal enough that it helps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I like, so I had gotten the trail and I got the permits and stuff. And then as soon as he like started taking over, I was like, Go ahead. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am thing. erasing everything about this from my mind. Like, <laughs> so um, did it feel different to you guys the second time as opposed yeah. to the first time? Yeah. Yes and no. Like there were a lot of familiar moments, even though like even in different areas. Yeah, we, we drove was, by a lot of the places we had yeah. been to. But in our first trip, we did a lot of the touristy sightseeing stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we did a only a little bit backpacking. We were backpacking. there for nine days, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that, yeah. How many days did we do backpacking? Because we went to Phelps Lake. We we stayed at Phelps Lake for two nights. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. But it was just us hiking in and then staying at that one campsite. Yeah. yeah. I think the one big difference is that we didn't spend any time uh, at Teton Village. Mm-hmm. Is that, that left like a remarkable impression on me. We went that was Teton really Village. cool because we took the gondola thing up yeah, to the mountain and yeah, had waffles. I forgot and, about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, that was so awesome. I forgot about those waffles. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a video clip of you, like, outside <laughs> doing, like, the cave troll <laughs> holding a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember when we, we all got waffles and then Thomas got a hot dog and we're like, Thomas, oh, get right. a waffle. And then he finally did. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're little, they're, like, Nutella filled Yeah, they, like, fold yeah, it. Yeah, those are so good, man. Yeah. Well, I yeah. totally forgot about that trip. <laughs> you know, if I'm convinced of one thing, though, it's like, I I think backpacking is definitely my favorite part of the trip. Because, I mean, whenever we go to a place and you're, like, going through the town that leads yeah, to the yeah. park, you're al- you always have this temptation to, like, eat at the restaurants and explore the yeah, cities. Yeah, yeah. And, but, well, I don't know. Yeah, I just... think one big mistake we made this time was having food at a restaurant before mm-hmm. we were backpacking. Cause I don't know about you guys, but after eating that breakfast on the first day, I was super lethargic. Oh yeah. <laughs> and like super like groggy from eating all that food. Well, I was farting a lot. So I had like, fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure I ate fruit and like yogurt. <laughs> it still hasn't helped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it helped for like five minutes. <laughs> so what was you guys' favorite part of the trip? This trip, not the first time. Uh, oh, I think I know. I think mine, was just actually yeah it was coming to that second lake and it's a perfectly sunny day there's like fluffy clouds in the sky and then we went swimming in it but it was just it it was a combination of a lot of things like the fact that we got there so soon even though the map said we had like 3.8 miles yeah and the fact that the weather was like great that day and just it was so great that we got sunburned i don't know if you can tell on camera but we're all a little bit sunburned (laughs) (laughs) i can see your nose is peeling right there like i'm peeling like up here right now yeah yeah (laughs) 
That was a powerful scent. Yeah, that second lake, I like that a lot. And then also, when we first got into that open area on the first day, it had stopped raining at that point. Mm-hmm. We got into this big open area. And then you and Thomas had gone ahead a little bit, and then it was yeah. just me and Andrew in there. That area was awesome. Yeah. It looked a lot like Dolly Sods. Very much like Dolly Sods. What was your favorite part? <laughs> um, well, obviously, the parts where you know the weather was great and everything, those were amazing. I would have to say, if, like, the most... I think the best part was when we got to the first campsite and mm. we got that fire started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're like, oh, yeah, now we're going. Because <laughs> the rain had stopped. It was a little chilly, but we got the fire going and we were like, you know, scoping out the campsites and everything. And we were like, man, this is going to be a great night. Mm. And then we cooked up that bison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so but Thomas had bought some ground bison and he actually cooked it. <laughs> like, it was kind of funny because we were cooking all of the things that a bear would want to eat <laughs> like we cooked some bison and then i put i was like oh i'm gonna put some tuna in there too <laughs> so just like you could smell fish and meat for miles <laughs> we ate really well this trip like yeah we did that second dinner with all the noodles like i don't know that was really good i think we, yeah that, that was a lot of food i too. need to get a big pan like that we brought a lot of food. like i know i brought brought i wouldn't say way too much but i definitely have excess food I had a sweet potato that I never cooked. Yeah. I had that the whole time. So it's like I had an extra pound of weight that I never used. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because the very first night when we were at the tent cabin, like I was eating so much and I was like, I don't nearly have enough. Yeah. But it ended up lasting like really long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's always like such a strange balance. It's like sometimes you think you have too much food. Sometimes you think you have not nearly enough. Mm. Yeah. The Smokies, we talked about that extensively, but we definitely didn't have enough that time. <laughs> um, also, a quick tip. Don't bring peanut butter as carry on. Yeah, yeah. They don't because let you bring peanut butter. They do butter not on. let you bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that the hard way. How much did you spend on your peanut butter? It was eighteen dollars. It was that still organic, boggles my mind. <laughs> it was organic almond butter. almond butter. No, organic raw almond butter. Like that's the most expensive you can get. <laughs> <laughs> they massage the almonds. <laughs> you should have just eaten it right there, then and there. Yeah, I should have just been like, okay, I'm just eating the whole jar. <laughs> sick, but <laughs> it's like Brian, you go past or security, least, go buy me like something, and bring it back here, and I'm just gonna eat this peanut butter. At least right like here. ask them to have a little taste. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can I get a little more before? <laughs> I should have just been like, will you do me a favor and eat this, please? <laughs> like, go home, put it on some bread, eat this. <laughs> I wonder if they're allowed to. Like, not I wanting to is one thing, but... If yeah, they're probably they're not allowed to, yeah. I would imagine. Uh, one time I, when I was working at a restaurant for like two weeks, somebody had ordered something and then they decided they didn't want it, or I put in the wrong thing, I can't remember which, but there was basically a big bowl of pasta that was perfectly good, and for some reason I was like stressed out, so when I found out it was wrong, I just threw it away, and it was untouched and oh, everything, man. and then right after I did it, I was like, why did I just throw that away? <laughs> I could have just put it in a box and eaten it when I got home. Yeah, yeah. I I hate when... Do you ever do that? When well, you were working at restaurants? Yeah, whenever things got made wrong or things like that, you know, usually they would just, we would get to eat it later or we would if just put it to the side yeah. and servers would walk by and like, you know, pick it and eat it. Yeah. But if you take something back, they want you to throw it away, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like if it's, if somebody, if, if, if the customer has already touched it in some way, then, you know, for health safety issues or health issues or something you're not supposed to i i had a friend i had a friend who worked with us at bob evans and (laughs) he would just eat the little kitty smiley fries off of the plates (laughs) whenever he collected them (laughs) i should have done that more often yeah the food waste kind of sucks at that type of thing um what was our post hike meal this time it was the snake river brew oh right right yeah. yeah that was awesome that was really cool. Yeah, stay tuned for the episode to mm-hmm. find out more about that. But yeah, that was a good yeah. place. Yeah, uh, we, we talked. Where we we were talking about this a little bit, but this is like one of the first trips we've had where we actually had time oh, yeah. to unwind. Yeah, before having to yeah, fly so back true. or drive home and mm-hmm. get back into reality, <laughs> and it was super nice. Oh, you know, we should pause real quick, and we should ask the viewers a question, just right. like we did last yes. time. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, uh, you got a question for all of our viewers slash listeners. <laughs> Correct. Um, so the question is for you guys out there, when you go backpacking or when you go camping, what is the one thing you look forward to most when you're about to get out there on the trail? Mm-hmm. Um, it could be anything from like 
the intense exhaustion you may feel at the end of the day you know some people relish that and or it could be like you know the food that you're going to eat um when you reach a campsite so let us know what uh, I, I know what yours is oh yeah it's getting to the campsite and like oh, definitely. getting everything sorted out it's like that moment where you yeah. if, if you don't have those like designated campsites it's when you come across mm. the location you're like this is it yeah My, like in shenandoah that's yeah 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 <laughs> mine is kind of similar in the sense that it's this like it, it's the whole contrasting again but it's like when you're feeling exhausted and you've hiked a lot and then you come to a beautiful open spot to just like sit and rest yeah and, like mm-hmm. you feel the breeze and like that's what life is all about yeah. right there i've realized that my favorite locations in uh backpacking areas are those big open ones mm. like dolly sods for instance when we went down that big hill or like this time when we went into that big opening mm-hmm. and there was a lake there. I just really like that feeling of like you've been in a forest for a while and then suddenly it opens up. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a finding a secret lair. I mean, it's the opposite of that because it's not a lair, but it's like finding this like magical land, yeah, like the yeah, land yeah. before time, that type of thing. Dong or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the El Dorado. That That's how I <laughs> felt when we first went to North Manitou. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. it had a lot of there was a lot of trails where you'd be walking through the forest and suddenly you'd come out into this open field and it just changed the whole feeling of the hike. Yeah. That first field that we camped in on that Island was like amazing. Yeah. Well, the only field I guess that we that was awesome. Yeah. Um, this just, I'm not sure what made me think of this just now, but quick travel tip spring for the extra money to not have a long layover <laughs> <laughs> because yesterday, like I remember when I was buying the tickets, I was, I, I saw that the layover was like four hours at Chicago but I thought the price difference was like mm-hmm. warranting, like, okay, well, we can wait four hours for that price difference. If it's a hundred dollars price difference, spring for the hundred dollars. I feel like because we were there for so long that at some point I was just like, man, where am I? Like, how am I still alive in <laughs> well, this place? <laughs> the problem is that like, there's a very large section where a layover is <sighs> too long to be enjoyable, but not nearly long enough to like actually do anything interesting with it. Right. Yeah. Like if you had like 12 hours, maybe you could catch a cab into yeah, the city and exactly. do something. Exactly. That would be really not fun. Not to mention that, you know, an airport is an airport. Like when I had a layover in uh, Tokyo, mm-hmm. that was interesting because you go around and you're seeing, I, it was like completely new to me. That's and I true. See all yeah. these Japanese stores and <laughs> watch the Japanese flight attendants who are like, it's like they're, they're so different from American like flights. Um, because they're like they all like line up outside when you get off the plane and they wow, bow really? and say thank you. Oh. Yeah. Oh man, customer service in Japan is second to none. Yeah. Like I've never experienced customer service like that, and it's just like it's in the culture. Like they all do it. Actually, on a similar note, I I took Turkish Airlines one time to travel to Bangladesh, and like that airline is amazing. Yeah, I've heard they That's have like free amazing. alcohol. The meals are great. I mean, it's a cross continental flight, yeah. so they're gonna have good meals. But it was like really good food, like yeah. restaurant quality. <laughs> That's where I got my spork too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got like this little travel kit of like yeah. metal cutlery. Yeah, great silverware. They give you like a thing with like all this toothpaste and stuff. And yeah, he came back. He had all this stuff like metal tins with, with uh, sleeping masks and, and toothbrushes <laughs> and <laughs> headphones and things. <laughs> is it more expensive to fly on that, or is See, it just I they only know. go to certain locations? Like, I, I don't know. It, they they say they're Europe's number one airline, um, which is funny because Turkey is both in Europe and Asia, but. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's make more Isn't expensive. Isn't that like more considered Central Asia yeah. rather than Europe? Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, part of me kind of wishes there was an airline that was just always super cheap and gave you no amenities. Like There's Frontier. Frontier? That's the one we took to Orlando. I took to oh. Orlando. I don't know if you did. I'll have to look into that. It's super cheap. Like, you have to pay to have a carry-on. So, like, if you can go super light, you can, like, fly for, like, less than $100. Which is good because i can <laughs> yeah like that day bag that i took to orlando is perfect for traveling with mm-hmm. i'm not even sure like i don't even think you can have a personal item maybe you can no there's no way you can no i mean like it's like i know you had to pay for a check-in or for a carry-on how much was it though it was like 25 dollars, 35 dollars i don't know um <laughs> also this is funny so yesterday when we were leaving i had a rain jacket because I, I wanted to wear oh, it in right, case right, it got right. cold. And I put all the memory cards for this trip in the pocket. And I said specifically to you guys, I was like, guys, if you see me without this rain jacket, make sure you be like, where's the rain jacket? Because all of our memory cards are in there. And at some point from Jackson Hole to Chicago, 
I lost the rain jacket. Like on the actual plane or something? On the actual plane, before we got on the plane, I don't know. <laughs> but the for some reason, I had taken the memory cards out and I had put them in my bag. So it's just dumb luck that I happened to take it out because we would have lost all the footage. What happened you know, anyway? Like, I don't when know. Did you, when did you say, I'm putting the memory cards? It was like when we were in the hotel. I bet it was probably at some point when we were in the Jackson Hole Airport because you, you were editing. Right, so I kept going taken, back and yeah, forth. You must have so taken the SD out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I probably left it at the place where I was editing. Yeah, that, oh. that makes the most sense now. Yeah, hmm. But I mean, I emailed the Jackson Hole Airport, lost and found. They said they haven't found it yet. But um, I also emailed America Air, American Airlines. It kind of sucks, too, because I just bought that rain jacket. <laughs> I mean, I got good use out of it twice at... Uh, that's Shenandoah. Not, that's not Shenandoah. So, <laughs> Shenandoah and then Yosemite. No, Yellowstone. But um, it was like 70 bucks. It was on sale at REI. Dang, dude. Uh, we still have the Sierra Trading Post one. Oh, we do? Yeah. yeah. Then why did I buy one? I don't, I don't know. think the Sierra Trading Post one fits you. Sure like it does. The, I think it fits you, right? Too short. Eh. I don't know. We can figure something oh, out. Oh, okay. Well. I think it's in my trunk. Oh, well then. I Is still it? have a rain jacket. Good, <laughs> good to know. Thank you, Sierra. Well, we could do a review on that now. Well, yeah. We've rain been, seems to follow us everywhere we've now. We've had so. to be, yeah. And now I've tried a rain jacket. I'll be able to compare it to mm -hmm. another one. You know, speaking of travel stuff, uh, at the, what was it? Dallas airport. Thomas ran into one of his like friends that he hadn't seen in four years. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think her name's Alexis or something. But anyway, my other thought was that while we were waiting there, they like overbooked the flight, which I don't know how that happens in the first place, but... I would love to be like so free that whenever someone is like, uh, do you want to like stay a night? It's like, yeah, why not? Like, you know what's funny about do. that is that when we were coming back from Yellowstone in 2009, my last flight was overbooked and oh. they offered a free travel voucher to go anywhere did in you the it? US and I did it. Oh. It was only like a, a four hour delay or something. Oh wow. But wow. I had a year to use the ticket and never used it. Oh man. So stupid, uh. yeah. I just, I kept letting the time go, kept letting the time go. It was like The Simpsons. He was like, this is like that time that Mr. T was at the mall. I'll go a little later. I'll go a little later. <laughs> and when I finally got there, he was already gone. <laughs> well, I would say, I would say that we've at least more than made up for it. Like, We're back. Sorry about that. The oven started beeping. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was saying we probably more than made up for your lack of using that voucher. <laughs> yeah. And traveling around. But, um. No, one, one other thing that's interesting is this trip was only one and a half weeks after we came back from Shenandoah. That's true. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it, I would feel more exhausted because of that, but I didn't really. Where did I went to? We went to Shenandoah. Then I went to Dallas this past week. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I like I had a day back here and then we immediately went to Yellowstone. So I've been traveling a lot lately, too. How's yeah. it feel? <laughs> Feels great. That's like my dream. To just travel. I, was, I always dreamed to square Martin. <laughs> yeah. So for me, like I, I like traveling, and I think if you can make the airport experience better, it definitely makes it a lot easier. What if they had a show like you know how they have Anthony Bourdain's layover? Uh huh. What if they had one that was literally about stuff you can do inside of the airport? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. There's we that had, movie um, with Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terminal, right? <laughs> oh, that's. I was always called, yeah. fascinated by that movie because it's like, I don't know, something about it, like just making, ha like having the total freedom <laughs> of like being in an airport because you have nowhere else to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm just gonna go and do I, whatever the hell I want. <laughs> I had this birding class uh, for a while, and every lab where we actually went out to go birding was like at 8 a.m. in the morning, and that's like usually when I s fall asleep. <laughs> well, it's like four hours after I fall asleep. So like I would be falling asleep at four or five a.m. in the in the morning, and or I'd still be up rather, and I I'd be like, okay, if I fall asleep now, I'm gonna have to wake up, drive thirty minutes down there. It's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I would drive there the night before <laughs> and just sleep in my car. But there's like I kind of want to have. That's what you did sometimes, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like you you probably heard me sometime at like six a.m. driving out, and then like uh, yeah, actually I think you're like yeah I heard you getting up and you have a morning class or something. I was like, yeah, I actually was getting up so I could sleep. In the car. <laughs> no, it's but. true. It's like that sense of nomadic freedom is very liberating. Like to where you're just yeah. like, you know what? Like I'm just going to go I, sleep in my I car. I want to have like s everything I need in my car. I think that's the appeal people have with the bug out bag is like, oh yeah. Grab one backpack. You're good to go. No, it's Maybe like we should just keep our rucks, our, our packs 
like yeah. packed all times and in our ba- in our car because we're gonna use them. You know. Yeah, it's not a so bad idea. Just keep them in there, like with emergency. That's what Kalen Pugh did. Oh really? Yeah, he does that. I mean, I do it too to an extent. I just don't have camera gear in there. Mm-hmm. But like as far as camping gear, it's always ready to go. Mm. Um, there's that movie Kikujiro, where there's the one character who's like lives in his van, mm-hmm. and he just like travels the Japanese countryside. He calls himself a traveling poet, but I think that's really cool. Yeah, like, that's just, awesome. Like the whole notion of like essentialism and minimal minimalism, I I find that super appealing because like a lot of times we have so much stuff that we don't even know why we have it and it's like superfluous it's always like you have five towels so why do i have five towels yeah why do i have 20 spoons am i ever gonna have 20 people at one time you know i i remember specifically i was at a friend's house one time and like i was using their basement bathroom and there's just all these little kitschy trinkets yeah yeah yeah. and like like this weird mass-produced bird sculpture or or something and it's like i don't want any like i don't want to have that because it's just especially because of my personality it's like i have so much trouble getting organized to begin with yeah, that if yeah. i had more stuff it just <laughs> i'd be so cluttered <laughs> make it extra difficult like <clears throat> certain things like i can understand like here on this bookshelf we've got like trinkets and stuff like that type of thing i can more understand that because it's like aesthetically appealing to people well i i would say that if it's something that has meaning rather right. than like something you bought on the wall at bob evans where it's like that's sure a wooden welcome sign that was made in a factory yeah yeah <laughs> like th- although I, you have to assume that most people who who might buy that mm. they bought it because they liked it yeah they yeah don't, no. they don't just buy it and they're like oh i'll, I'll buy this and put it yeah, on the wall. It's, it's, well go ahead well I, I, no i mean i i guess so but i also think there there can be this like almost addictive appeal to buying stuff that and then like later realizing you didn't really need or want it yeah i i still feel like it's less the the thing with that is it's less subtle than something like having 20 spoons because on the surface having 20 spoons makes sense Mm -hmm. you're like oh yeah you know i got lots of spoons if i ever need a spoon or whatever (laughs) but what it often does is having 20 spoons is you don't wash your dishes you just use a new one every time (laughs) and if you had like three spoons you'd be like well now i have to wash my dishes i'm laughing because uh there's a a scene in jordan or in conan where he's like in jordan schlansky's office and he's like an espresso cup. Oh, he has two in case he ever makes a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you talking about the 20 spoons makes me think about what Andrew does when, um, when we used to eat cereal more often. Uh-huh. He, we would, you know, use the bowls first and then the bowls would get all dirty and then the dishes wouldn't get done and then Andrew would switch to cups. <laughs> and so I'd see dirty cups with like like milk residue and like cereal. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's well, such an easy thing yeah. to do when you have... It, it's funny because I've been getting rid of a lot of my clothes recently and like I only wear like there's only three or four t-shirts that I like to wear and like two button down shirts that I like to wear. Yeah. And like I've been trying to get like everything that I'm definitely never going to wear out. I've been getting rid of unless it's something I can like go jogging in. Yeah. But it's so nice cuz then like you have this little pile of clothes and then you have to do the laundry once it's out. Yeah. And, and man, it makes laundry really easy cuz you've oh, yeah. got just one bag of laundry, you yeah, plop it in there. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, <laughs> like whenever I do laundry, all I do is I dump everything lights darks whatever into the machine yeah. and like put some we've been talking about that a lot this weekend how come because of that one video oh yeah. right which yeah which <laughs> shall not be named <laughs> like, um so it's funny because i just realized that my wardrobe is a bug out bag all of the clothes that i own are in one bag mm-hmm. and i've actually taken that like when i need to go travel like when i go to you guys' house i just grab that bag and i go i don't even have to pack it first well, I put my toothbrush in there. Um, okay, but somewhat related, but something we talked about a lot this weekend was, well, I don't know if I talked about it with you, but we definitely talked about it, which is, are we just soft? Like, oh, when yeah, we yeah. go out into the wild and then the temperature just fluctuates just a little bit, we're miserable. And we're like, oh, this is rain, this is cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, I, I heard you guys talking about that. Okay. I didn't say anything, but I, I was pretty comfortable this whole entire trip. Like, it was a little cold, but, like, it was never to the point where it was really bothering me. Yeah, same. So, I mean, were, I mean, were you guys specifically referring to, like, the nighttime? And, I mean, For me, I mean, I, I think I, I get cold compared to normal people, period. But, like, at that nighttime, like, both nights, I was, like, freezing my butt off. And I wasn't wearing that many clothes because we changed out for the, the bears and stuff. But just, like, I'm, I'm really tired of not being tough. <laughs> like in my head I'm like oh, I could be a tough guy and then every time it comes down to it I'm like man I'm not a tough guy I want to be a tough guy 
But I don't know what like the difference is. Is you have to expose yourself all the time? Temperature or? is hard. I feel like, especially because we live in states where you get the four seasons. So like when you're getting used to the cold, and then it turns warm. Oh and you have to yeah, used. yeah. But and, I didn't. We've already established that Robbie's like prone to cold, like being yeah. colder than us. But I think it's because I think one of the differences between me and you guys is that I've made a conscious effort to make my camping experience as comfortable as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I, Andrew likes to sleep under a tarp, and that's his choice. But like you know, if if I'm sleeping in a tent, I'll bring like an air mat, and mm-hmm. you know, I'll bring like. I always go for at least the warmer sleeping bag. Yeah. I'm never going to cut corners if I think it might make my trip less enjoyable. Yeah. That's a, that's so. actually a good point. I, I do think there is a softening aspect that civilization has, though. Like, when you think about what the first people did and, like, everything they had to do, like, flint napping just so they can have a tool to, like, scrape something to yeah. do something else. And, like, it was, like, I don't know. It's a lot of, it's not necessarily a lot of time, but it's a lot of, like, hard work. Yeah. And I think when you do it enough, though, like, it's just, okay, no, no big deal. You know, it's funny because, like, civilization, <clears throat> like, it does soften you up, but it also frees up so much of your energy mm. to do things like this. Mm-hmm. Like, the editing process. For some that. people, at least. <laughs> yeah, for some people, exactly. But for us specifically, this, it, it allows us to do that mm-hmm. because the technology was able to be made yeah, because people true. didn't have to hunt for food and like make shelter. <laughs> we don't have to hunt for food. We can spend all of our time writing music, editing, doing this yeah. and that. Part of me still wonders if like, like I love doing this, but I also wonder if I were born back then, I feel like I wouldn't feel a need to do anything greater. Like it would just, I'd be mm-hmm. pretty satisfied with how life was. Well, I mean, it's like, until uh, I got gored by a bison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I, I used to be a lot more on the, I wish we could go back to primitive mm-hmm. society and everything. Uh, and it, I think this is still true, but if overnight somehow we could get rid of all technology and have the night sky again, I'd give it in a second or I'd do it in a second. Because like the things that I really like, like I could still somewhat do, like if we wanted to tell stories and make music, we could just do that live with real instruments and stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's one thing that I really regret that we've lost is the night sky because just like this last trip in Yellowstone like me and Andrew were sleeping under the stars on the second night and it blows my mind every time it's like you see things that you didn't even know were up there like little twinkling red dots that you're (laughs) not sure what they are (laughs) well yeah every time I sleep out under the stars and then I like close my eyes and then open them back up I'm like whoa (laughs) yeah like it's still there (laughs) it's a really fun way to fall asleep too because like I was so tired and then you just kind of struggle to keep your eyes open to look at the stars and then eventually you just let it Mm. fade away until you fall asleep but it's such a nice feeling Mm. one thing I will say about the whole softening thing is (laughs) well okay like on a more serious note I've had a lot of days where I wake up and I like don't eat for hours and then and I think that's helped me like on the trail where if I'm feeling hungry I just I'm fine with it. Like I, I almost would rather feel hungry if I know that I have food coming later than feel full. Um, and I don't you're know. Talk, I think you're talking about when you're on the trail. Yeah, I, I think there's just a lot of like stuff out there where it feels hard, but there's also an appeal to it. But then another aspect is also the the fact that I live in such squalor. Usually, like my room was so messy for the longest time, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I recently he cleaned it. it. He admits it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. And like there was clothes and trash everywhere, and like the bathroom's dirty. I recently cleaned it and then like I also I even like scrubbed the bathroom floor and stuff and like I had one of my cabinets hinges was like loose so like every time you closed it it would tilt over mm-hmm. and my sink wouldn't drain properly and uh yeah just all this stuff and then when I got that all fixed I was like oh, wow it's like having stuff that works feels luxurious now yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think like in that sense if you if you go through experiences that are like harder than the norm then you can like harden yourself up. Yeah. It's like that bullet ant glove. Like okay. once yeah. you do that, the jungle is no big deal. <laughs> you know, um, you talking about how your room was messy kind of makes me think um, it'd be interesting to discuss how we're different when it comes to camping. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm, because yeah. me and Thomas were talking about how me and him, when we go camping, we're the things we, how we handle it is Prioritize. probably more similar. Yeah. Than you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, like just one example that comes to mind right away was when I was packing my food bag, I had a big gallon Ziploc bag and I literally put everything in there 
and then I had one smaller bag in there with like my utensils in there to keep it separate. And then I put that <laughs> into my food bag. So I was like, you know, if I wanted food, I just pull out the whole Ziploc bag, open it up, take something out and eat it. Um, and then Andrew, <laughs> Andrew like handed me his food bag and he was like, can you get my spork out of here? So I opened it up and it was just like trash <laughs> and like loose food everywhere. I was just like digging around. I was like, dude, I, I can't find the spork in here, man. I, I do need to get a trash bag. Yeah. Well, no, here's the thing. Um, so I've, I've talked about this with my mom before, but there's, it's like you have like thorns. Problems are like thorns or splinters in you, right? And some of them you can just ignore. And some of them, like, eventually you have to be like, man, I got to fix this because I can't just keep dealing with this. Mm. Like, rain gear is one of those things. Like, we just kept letting ourselves get rained on mm. and not we doing just, nothing to prepare we just, for we're it. We're like, oh, you know, we're, we're lucky with weather. Yeah, we so never really had such right. a bad experience that was a breaking point. Well, back, yeah. yeah, back in the day, our rain plan was a, like, disposable poncho. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like that that's cool like you can do the macgyver thing and just say i'm just gonna rough it as i go and i'll make something up but sometimes it's good to just be like yo i'm gonna fix this problem that i have like one just from this last trip that i know i want to fix is i need to get a pillow just like you were saying because my neck just like when you sleep on the ground it's just not very comfortable yeah. mm. and there's no reason to go through that pain when you can easily find a solution yeah, exactly. to something that yeah I've, like for the longest time i've always known that i'm more comfortable with more comfortable with a pillow or something to substitute as a pillow and i just never ever wanted to buy one because it's like oh it's a pillow it's like it's yeah. a piece of cushion why do i want to pay you know 10 bucks for a tiny cushion just for camping you know i'll just you know deal with it yeah and then it, yeah, and then just like yeah. you said, it's just like you know, like why? Why not? am I doing like, this? To myself? So you know, it's funny. It's like I, I have to admit this, but I've had this like mindset, this like kind of hipster mindset of like, no, I can rough it. You know, I don't need all this stuff. But like, it's kind of silly because there's no if, if you really don't like it, like sleeping without a pillow, you shouldn't do it. You should get a pillow, man. Don't don't feel like you're less of a man because mm -hmm. you're using a pillow yeah. out in the wild. That, that's my idea is that if I'm comfortable, if I'm enjoying a particular moment of the camping, that that increases my enjoyment of the whole experience. Like why why dampen it by, you know, having a miserable night of sleep or something, you know? Right, yeah. So that's how I feel. I think I need to fix my air mat. That is one of those items that helps a lot. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of which, do you still have your air mat? Yeah, that's right over there, actually. Mm. Maybe I'll buy that from you. They're not that expensive, right? 75 bucks something like that yeah. something like yeah. that yeah mm. you, you know one of those items that i've been debating on getting like just i mean it's not necessary in this group setting but it's a trowel because every time i go poop and i like am alone or whatever with other people i usually just opt for like a stick or a rock that i mm -hmm. find <laughs> but it's hard to dig sometimes right? it's hard sometimes i found a great boomerang shaped stick <laughs> like, work really well i remember that time i found a really good digging <laughs> stick <laughs> oh so well, it's funny because like the other day w when we went on this trip you were cooking mm -hmm. and i was like saying like i love your spirit but i hate watching you cook <laughs> because like you, you're actually really similar to my mom mm -hmm. you guys both like you can ignore messes you can ignore problems but you guys get the job done like when something needs to get done, like you guys can focus on it and do it. Like starting a fire, you won't stop. Like I'm like Andrew, please stop trying. Can we use a tinder joint so I can drink my coffee? <laughs> but you won't stop. Like if you just have like that focused mindset. But it also, I feel kind of feel like it's like in life you've got those video game scales like in a sports <laughs> game like, like in the, the points yeah, yeah yeah dirtiness you know hunger it's like, and get the job done in organization ability it's like a sliding scale it's like dur, dur, no organization <laughs> because like what happens is if you get too caught up in the organization thing that's all you do like sometimes i will spend a whole day organizing my stuff and i'm like why why am i doing this i'm not actually accomplishing anything i'm just making it a little bit nicer for like 10 minutes before i get it all unorganized again <laughs> see it's like from my perspective the jedi are evil no from my <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective it's like when you let disorder like bother you it's like why like <laughs> yeah no it's just, it's letting you you're controlled yeah. by the disorder but at the yeah. same time like <laughs> i don't know 
No, it's like I, it, it's, it always comes back to meeting at the middle. Yeah. Like you want to find a good middle ground. You don't want to be too far on either side. Yeah, because, yeah, because like, like after, well, I was going to say after a certain point of disorder, then, it becomes a hindrance. Yeah. 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 Well, a great example is at the airport. I was like, I was like, maybe now's a good time to check the permit stuff. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I probably should have printed this out. <laughs> and thankfully, yeah. Thomas had already taken care of it. Yeah. And I like to tell myself that I knew that. And that's why I never did it. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the truth is, I just didn't think about it. <laughs> now that I think about it, you and Thomas combined, like if you guys could combine or meet in the middle, you'd be a, you guys would be a very solid person. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> like our powers combined, we make one functional human being. <laughs> yeah, because Thomas is Thomas is a little bit farther on the Jordan Schlansky scale <laughs> of the like. Although, you know, Jordan Schlansky is super unorganized. Yeah, that's yeah. really funny. It's really weird. Man, I finally got around to watching the, a lot of the Jordan Schlansky videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. St- I still can't tell if he's genuinely he's real. like No, a, he's real. He's, like, they did... Conan has said it a million times. Like, that's real. <laughs> it's, like, a somewhat exaggerated, but, like, that's more or less him. And yeah. on a Reddit AMA, uh, Aaron Blair, the g- gamer guy with the white mm-hmm. hair... He said, "No, that's the real Jordan Schlansky." Like, it's I'm sure they exaggerated. do a little bit of editing to kind of accentuate yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. But yeah, man, like if I ever met someone like that, it actually, it was like <laughs> it was exactly the moment. Like, okay, so you know, there's the one where <laughs> Conan's like, and you have a biscotti, and then he <laughs> immediately goes biscotto. <laughs> and then when I was using the hair gel, and I was oh, like. Yeah. Um, I was like, so how, do you, so how do you use pomade? Like, is it different from hair gel? And he just goes, immediately Thomas goes, it's pomade. And I'm just like, <laughs> why would you even tell me that? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a strange thing? How much we want the rest of the world to see it the way we do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, why, we're, why can't we just, like, be, like, okay with other people doing it the other way? Because, like, I know myself, it's like, when somebody's doing it the way I don't want them to do it, it infuriates the hell out of me. <laughs> but at the same time, there's that background knowledge of why is this bugging me so bad? Stop mm-hmm. it. Stop it, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. It, part, part of it must be, anyway. I feel like part of it is the <laughs> ego. Like, you must know that I know how to pronounce this word. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure he said it with no bad intention. No, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just natural to say, like, oh, it's just pomade. But it's just, it just <laughs> was so, like, the juxtaposition of that with the Jordan Schlansky video. I was just like, because it's like, it wasn't like I was like, so how do you use this um, pomade? Like, it wasn't like I was, you know, he just corrected me right off the bat as if, like, I really needed to know. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of which, like, Thomas is a great like it the the episodes to me they feel more complete when he's there mm-hmm. like it's just like he's like that that last wheel like yeah. sometimes we're like that that tricycle but sometimes you want that other wheel for more stability <laughs> <laughs> well he offers a nice like because i feel like me and him are so different in a lot of ways yeah but it's nice to have the yeah. different yeah the like contrast <laughs> Talk i wanted contrast. to make a point about when you were saying about buying a trowel oh yeah yeah so i always bring a trowel and, and toilet paper and Robbie always n- knows that I'll bring it <laughs> like he's under well, the assumption that I'll bring it that's like a good question yeah. because like I keep asking you beforehand <laughs> so that I'm like oh I don't have to bring it but like should we do it like is that the best way to do it or should we all bring a little bit see this I feel is like, oh, oh god no I feel like Cause okay because we came up with an issue when we were in Yellowstone, we were hanging my bag exclusively with the food mm-hmm. and our clothes, um, and I carried like the water filter mm. and the the toilet toilet stuff. And we uh, the second night we f- I forgot to take it out. So like the night before and the morning after, we were like, oh man, Brian, did you do you have the water filter or do you oh, have the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the trowel? Yeah, yeah, and so I, was, I was like, no, I was like, no, it's hanging up there. <laughs> See, well, yeah, go oh, ahead. That, no, that goes back to this whole like you know how I kept saying like in principle I want blah blah like. In, in principle, it doesn't matter if we bring perishable food like that bison. Yeah. But, like, I would never think to buy that because I want food that, in theory, would last, like, if I had yeah. to stay in the wilderness uh, longer. No, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. Too. And also, like, in principle, the water filter is one thing I need, but I would like to have a bag where I, if, if I were alone, I could still use the same Speaking bag. Speaking of which, you should probably get a replacement filter for yours just in case we ever going to need yeah. a second one. Yeah. Well, um, no, I mean, it's like that. I was thinking about the group dynamic versus <clears throat> the individual dynamic. Yeah. When you're in a group, I feel like that 
it's really important for everybody to act like they're in a group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like that's one of those things because like, for instance, I carry all the batteries and camera equipment, right? Mm, yeah. So like, would it, like it doesn't make any sense for us to like each carry every single thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, let's each carry batteries. Maybe it may, sometimes it makes more sense. Like that's why you have a group is mm -hmm. so that one person brings the toilet paper, one person brings the batteries, one person brings this, blah, blah, blah. I think it's less of a, I think we just need to make sure we communicate about it. Is that the thing? Like if I bring the toilet paper, what we could do is when we meet up, you know, I roll off like half of it and you put it in a Ziploc bag. And yeah, put that's it in smart. Your bag. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like we don't need more than one trowel unless you know i mean there's there's never really a reason we need more than one trial yeah, yeah. and uh like this trips especially a lot of the things that i typically bring that don't get used <laughs> got used like i bring a lot of extra plastic bags hmm. for trash or whatever and we use them for like trash in our clothes yeah, yeah. um and i bring rubber bands and things like that so I, I i i try to plan like if it's not too much of a hindrance i'll, I'll bring something you know yeah i think that's the key is like uh, I, we could do a better job of that before we leave. I mean, we do a decent job of it. One, one of the things we always do is we're always communi communicative about what kind of shelter we're bringing. Right, yeah. Because oh, yeah, yeah. shelter's yeah. a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Because, yeah, and exactly. It, yeah, it's, there's no point in everyone bringing a tent or whatever. Yeah. 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 Except for when we went to Shenandoah, like, we made a point of that. Because yeah. you got rained on. We were barely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We barely didn't it get was rain. Gonna rain. And yeah. I was like, nope, we're, <laughs> I'm sheltering up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you tarp it? At, second night at Wayne, Shenandoah. Shenandoah, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, the second, the night. second night, the first, but night the first night you yeah. tented, yeah, but that was more because it was we dark and night, like yeah. there wasn't a proper campsite. Either. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. the the floor had a lot of brush under mm -hmm. it. So yeah, it it reminds me of Les Stroud and how like he was talking about how if he didn't have to film his shelters would be like way better. And, like, oh yeah, and like someone else might see that and be like, oh, that's an excuse, but it's like it's one hundred percent true. Yeah, like there is no way that yeah. yeah. Especially because he's actually surviving. Like <laughs> that's true. Like he's he's filming and surviving. We're filming and just like having fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna take one more quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. And last episode we asked everybody what inspires you to go camping mm -hmm. and are to get out into the outdoors. And you guys had a lot of answers. Who wants to go first? Uh, I've got one from Josh Harris. Hello, Josh. Um, he says those fragmented spaces of natural growth is the real world and my experience of civilization is unfulfilling he said i typed this after the prompt but before andrew's answer which sounded similar and yeah that's like i think that's something we always forget is like what the natural state of the world or the real world you could say is it's wilderness like and then this stuff that we're living in if you just did not maintain it it would eventually turn back into a forest or something mm -hmm. and i can definitely like now that I'm sort of living in suburbia, I can sort of, I, I don't know, my, my craving for the wilderness is less because there's parks and forests nearby that I can go to and wander around. Um, but I, whenever I was living in the city, I just, I don't know, I remember staring out the window and all you see are like these lights shining at night and this concrete everywhere and you're like, I need to get out of here as soon as I can. So that's a great answer. Mm. Okay. Um, I have a comment <coughs> from... Um, well, a story, I guess, or... Okay, I have a comment from Skylar L. <laughs> um, he says that what draws me to camping and hiking and just any outdoor activity is simply the fact that I feel at home and at peace out there. I have issues with anxiety, among other things, and being out in the wilderness calms me down more than anything else ever has. Something about the open air, the freedom. Um, you know, when I read that, I thought that... I think that's one of the big reasons that I love going outdoors too. I, don't, I wouldn't say that's specifically the reason that I go outdoors, but it always is something that's at the back of the, at the back of my mind after a camping trip. Because when you think about it, or when I think about it, in my normal day-to-day -day life, just think about how many times you look at a clock. Mm -hmm. Like, what time is it, and do I need to go to bed? Or what time is it, do I have to go leave now to do this thing? Or you know right before you go to bed did i set my alarm for this time you wake up you look at your phone what time is it do i have to get up i hate that mm. but like you do it so much you don't think about it but then when you go outside and you have the absolute freedom of being like i'm gonna sleep now <laughs> or i'm gonna get up yeah. now you know there's no sense of pressure 
of having to do something at a specific time. There's four times in the wilderness. Day, night, dusk, and dawn. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, that's something that I don't really notice when I'm out there. But when I think about it, it is something that really makes me enjoy being out there is the fact that there's just no pressure to yeah. rush or do mm-hmm. something. It's funny, too, because there's lots of times where we kind of need to know the time mm-hmm. and nobody does. Yeah. Like we don't have watches or phones aren't on. Yeah. So like we actually have to go into the camera to check. The time. <laughs> <laughs> so you do kind of get timeless. Um, so I'm going to read State Parker's. Um, he says, my desire to explore stems from the fear of complacency. I, for one, can't stand stagnating. Every challenge I conquer on foot leads me to seek out a harder challenge somewhere else. We absolutely love showing up to parks at night and waking up to completely new surroundings. I think you guys feel me on that one. I want to, I want to read a similar comment really okay. quick from Scott Dunbar because he talks about how most of his life is pretty safe and predictable, but being in the desolate wilderness of Maine and New Hampshire is the opposite. So he's saying, like, you take your life into your own hands, and it's like there's this danger of being out there. One careless step or decision can have disastrous consequences, which is exciting. I, yeah. Um, so for me, like the, what State Parker said, for me, I'm always wanting something new. And I used to kind of feel like that was a bad thing. I was like, how come I can't just be satisfied with what I got, right? But I also feel like it's kind of like, uh, it, it, if you use that as a strength rather than a weakness, it's you're always discovering new things. It doesn't mean that you're not satisfied with, you, with what mm-hmm. you have and you can't be satisfied with what you have. But I love like discovering new stuff and exploring and like every time we go to a new park, that's such an amazing feeling of being like, oh man, this place looks so mm-hmm. different and so new. Mm-hmm. And you feel like you're, it's almost like, like an RPG, you're filling out your side quest checkbox. <laughs> <Yeah. right? laughs> you're like, oh yeah, this place is great. This yeah. place is great too. You I, know, oh, oh, I go was going to say, um, one thing that I brought up in the, I think it was the Winter Dolly Sods episode when people were asking me why I would want to go winter camping. And this, this attributes to just any camping trip in, in general is that there's a sense of accomplishment and pride of being able to be one of those people who can go out there, you know, mm. deal with whatever weather throws at you, go out there and be in the wilderness. Because, you know, it's not for everyone. And I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone by being able to do it, but there's a sense of accomplishment that you always get by knowing that you can handle that and that's something that i like too yeah it's funny because there's another comment that's sort of like the opposite but i agree with both meredith mclaughlin who actually sent us a lot of food and we kept accidentally saying mclaughlin (laughs) mclaughlin (laughs) no we said mclaughlin but then we'd be like wait is it yeah yeah. (laughs) but she says her draw is to the outdoors of that she was raised out there um it's like going home to her I don't feel comfortable in modern cementy places. My first birthday is recorded in my baby book as me eating dirt and bark off the ground <laughs> on a camping trip. My parents taught me a ton and are still a huge outdoor influence on Jared and I. Mm-hmm. Mir, Thoreau, Roosevelt, David Suzuki are childhood heroes. Isn't, didn't and she say that she's like super <coughs> distantly related to John Muir? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did. I'm really loosely super distant cousins maybe related to John Muir on my dad's side. So it's, I don't know, but it's funny because I... I get both this, like, I. when I think of my childhood, I think of, like, being in the backyard and seeing the woods in the forest, and there's a, there is a very real sense of coming home or, like, reliving these nostalgic memories when you're in the wilderness. But at the same time, there's also this feeling of, like, letting go of comfort and being out in the wild and just, like, completely in this raw, harsh environment. Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of both, I think. But I, I would say that, I'm more familiar with like the Eastland or Eastern U.S. woodland environment, and going out west is kind of like it can be more exciting, but then going into the wilderness in the east is like more comforting and peaceful sometimes. Mm. She also said that um, we should try reading the Wheel of Time series. Robert Jordan is a ridiculously good author. She said if we all, if we liked Conan the Barbarian, we should do that. Mm. I want to check that, that out. Sounds familiar. Um, we also had one question from a, a listener. Uh, Terry Schemmel, he asked, what's the weight of our packs minus camera gear? Um, I can tell you, at least for Yellowstone, I recent I weighed my pack for Yellowstone, um, and I was carrying two liters of water, which I guess we could say is... Isn't it exactly... Six pounds or something? I don't know. Well, I think my pack was around 28 or 29 pounds, so we usually hover around 30 average. 30, yeah, mine was mm-hmm. 32. That was the first time I ever weighed it. 
without camera gear is 32 mm. which i feel like is kind of heavy i would much i would really like to lighten it but i just don't know how like especially the heavy food I bring. I mean, uh, the only way you're gonna lighten it is probably by investing in the ins- ex- expensive like ultralights type stuff. Mm. One liter of water is uh, two point two pounds, by the way. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I carry a three liter water thing. Yeah. Which, by the way, you guys really should get that. You've <laughs> run out of water like every night. Well, I carry a two liter in an Nalgene, which is a one liter, so I do have three liters. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's just that we didn't fill up. Then you should still get a three liter because we ran out. Well, it's because we didn't fill up. We only filled up like yours and mine and oh. then andrew and thomas were like oh we're fine yeah me and thomas didn't refill ours the whole time it takes but like you five were minutes carrying to... like two liters only mm-hmm. yeah it takes like five minutes to refill we yeah. should just refill everybody mm-hmm. yeah. every time we refill. every time because <clears throat> you take out all the equipment anyway yeah. yeah okay i think that was a good episode yeah. any closing thoughts um well again you know answer the question at the beginning or if you have any questions for us go ahead and post comments we'll uh, read the ones we uh you know feel like we really want to discuss or and we'll answer questions sorry we've taken so long getting the audio onto the actual podcast thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mostly blame thomas <laughs> the itunes podcast feed yeah. is what he's talking yeah. about yeah um well actually before we go no, what is thoughts. our maybe we should talk about what our general timetable is for the mm. release of the next two episodes plus we should talk about the voting for the third yeah, episode yeah, yeah. we're going to mm-hmm. do this season where we yeah yeah okay I I don't know what uh, so, so my actually my coworker asked me what when we p- plan to release. Um, what I told him was I and I, I assume that you guys are probably around this, but I'm thinking Shenandoah will probably be end of June at the latest. Yeah, Shenandoah for sure this month. Yellowstone sometime in July. Yeah, at and, least the early release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean the the early release thing is because like what I wanted to do was get onto a timing of where we could do one a month and then have mm-hmm. the public release be on the first of every month. So it's mm-hmm. easy to remember and all that. Yeah. But with the timing of this, we might not, I don't think we'll be able to do that. But uh, we can definitely get out an episode, Shenandoah, before the end of June, and then surely get Yellowstone out before the end of July. So mm-hmm. early releases. I don't know when the public releases will mm-hmm. be. But um, So what is the deal with the third episode and the voting? Yeah, so the third episode, we, are, we have three locations we're going to go to. They're all canoeing locations. One is Boundary Waters, one is Pictured Rocks, and the other is Algonquin Provincial Park. Was it Picture Well, or Roy- Isle Royale. Which one was oh, it? Oh, whichever one is better. We'll, we'll announce the yeah. official. <laughs> so there's four right now. <clears throat> but no, it's, sure. it's going to be either Pictured or Isle Royale. But okay. we'll, we'll officially announce it when the voting yeah. actually begins and stuff. Um, if you are a $5 patron or higher then you're you're able to vote we've had that reward on there for so long but yeah you haven't, haven't used it yet yeah <laughs> um but yeah it'll be a canoeing episode you choose where we go there'll be a deadline because we'll, we do actually have to plan the trip out yeah and, stuff. and then what about the patches yeah you yeah. might have seen um some adventure archives patches and some of our, our more mm-hmm. recent videos um we have a limited amount uh because we're just we we're just seeing what gauging what the general interest was mm-hmm. so stay tuned uh we'll give you some information on how you can get one of those patches and if uh if they're it's popular be a patron reward it will be a Is patron it? reward. It's, it's, it'll be a patron reward that's what we're thinking mm-hmm. right now but if it becomes to a point where people re- a lot of people really want them we'll mm-hmm. uh, try and expand to something a little more accessible yeah it's a one-time reward should we just say yeah one-time reward ten dollars and up um the well, reason hmm? hold on we have to also mention that previous people who are already ten dollars will get one. Yeah, you don't have to be. Yeah, uh, I know, I know. We just don't want to make sure we don't. Everybody understands the, clearly the details. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, if you're if you're already a patron, you don't have to yeah. sign up like be a new person to a- anyone who's at, at ten dollars and up and uh, who's who's contributing to the Shenandoah episode. A current patron. Yeah. Yes. Current or new, we'll get a patch. Right. And the reason we're doing it that way is because it's just too hard to get this whole merchandise thing going yeah. at this early of a stage. So that's just the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not worth the effort to set up a, <coughs> an online store for, you know, patches mm-hmm. unless we offered a lot more merchandise. But that involves a lot more work that we just don't have time to do right now. They're beautiful. No desire to do. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both. We don't want to. Well. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> final thoughts. <laughs> and remember you're gonna love stay the dry next two episodes there. the next two episodes are gonna yeah be yeah no that is a, yeah yeah that is yeah. a great final thought the footage <laughs> I think we say that great. every time right no I this mean, episode is amazing i mean they yeah. are but like 
every time we come back, we're like, oh, this is going to be the best one. I think <laughs> Yellowstone is definitely going to be our best yet. The trip was definitely amazing. Visuals wise, it's already the best. Yeah. Just looking at the footage, the visuals are the best. Like the colors, man, and like, oh, location. I even took pictures with my cell phone, and even on my cell phone pictures, you can see how how the blues are so blue and the greens are so green and the yeah. lakes were blue also. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for listening slash watching. Yeah. Thank you so much for your support. Be sure to check us out on Facebook uh, and like our Facebook page. You can check out our Instagram, um, Patreon, Twitter.com slash adventure archives. Slash slash adventure. adventure. Sorry. Tell all your friends about us. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> see ya.